there'll be other opportunities to talk about the ideas, <clears throat> the policy significance. I, I thought it might be more helpful today to talk a little bit about the, the personal side of what it means to be a scientist, because the real value of these prizes in, is in celebrating the, the enterprise. So after doing some very pure kind of ivory tower type research on growth, I started to think about how this could translate into policy. So I wrote a paper about bringing back some elements into government support for PhD students that were in the previous um, Defense uh, Authorization Act uh, uh, that was uh, passed during the Sputnik era. But those elements had been lost in more recent rounds of, of funding. So there were some congressional staffers who uh, got interested in that paper. They reached out to me. I started meeting with them um, from both, both the Republican and Democratic sides. And we eventually converged on a bill that would bring back this kind of fellowship program. And um, there, they had a Democrat and a Republican to sponsor it in the Senate, and then a Democrat and Republican to sponsor it in the House. So I was in Washington and then woke up on the morning of September 11th, 2001, and realized that the press conference wasn't going to happen. You know, sometimes eh, the time isn't right. Sometimes things happen that just don't, uh, uh, you know, that don't go your way, and so you gotta, you gotta take another path. This was a, at a time when I was actually very discouraged about the lack of engagement uh, with some of these ideas within the economics profession. So part of why I started the, the company that. Um, uh, President Hamilton re referred to is uh, I saw that there was going to be no opportunity to do anything in science policy in the United States and I had to go uh, figure out something else to do and so I focused on uh, uh, education. Then um, let, me, let me go back in time and tell you another story. When I first arrived at the Uni uh, University of Rochester, I think in my first year, but we could go back and see there was a Nobel Prize that was awarded to George Stigler. I remember it was George. And I went into the commons room and said something a little bit disrespectful, um, as people have noted, that, you know, maybe they should just give the prizes out at random. Maybe that's what they're actually doing. And I realized when I said that that I had really hurt a senior colleague that I admire a great deal, Lionel McKenzie. And I just, in an instant, I saw that Lionel had been hoping each year that he might, because he was a very good candidate, arguably a better candidate than other people who had gotten prize for similar work. But every year he uh, was disappointed uh, about not getting the prize. So I didn't even have a paper published at this point. So it was like absurd for me to think this. But I remember promising myself at the time, I'm never going to want to have the Nobel Prize. I'm never going to hope for it. I'm never going to expect it, because it can just tear you up. So what do you do? You face setbacks. You know, you, you can't uh, get drawn into the, you know, the, the rewards. You know, what you do is you commit to something that's larger than yourself. That's what helps you keep going. And uh, that sense of belonging means that you can, you can take satisfaction out of a, a career, whether or not you happen to be the one who gets, who gets a prize for it. And this is part of what makes the university and part of what makes science special, is it creates this opportunity we have to commit to something that will last uh, beyond our lifetimes and ideally will make the, the world a, a little bit of a better place. And, and then just to close the loop, I sold this software company and then started thinking about what might be the most important policy thing I could do because I still couldn't see any way to do science policy. And I convinced myself that urbanization was the most important thing we could do to help um, encourage uh, the catch-up growth in the developing world. And so I started looking around for some university that well, I was at Stanford at the time, but started looking around for some place that was willing to take a, take a bet, try something kind of risky. And so John Sexton, um, through Peter Henry, kind of heard about my idea, was willing to meet with me, and John kind of committed, we could, you know, we could do that here. And so I came to NYU thinking we'd have a chance to really do something in practice that could matter in urban, urban development. And my role at the Marin Institute was not as a, the idea generator. I wasn't you know, 
the one who originated the ideas that we implemented there. My job was just to provide air cover for the people who were actually doing it. So you can serve in a lot of different ways, but what, what kind of keeps one going and what makes it all so rewarding is that kind of commitment to, to something that's, that's larger than, than oneself. So, you know, there were bad days. Today's a good day. But, you know, you, you got you to gotta find a way to uh, keep your focus on what matters in the long run. Thanks. Oh, no, I'll stand. Okay. You know that flight or f fight or flight thing? If it, if it gets hostile, I'm ready to run. So no, we're not letting you leave you. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Is this on? Just a couple of housekeeping items as okay. we move to the Q&A. Um, for those of you in the room, we have mic runners. Um, in order to ask a question, just raise your hand. And I would ask you to please state your name and your media outlet. Um, for those of you who are tuning in via live webcast, we also have um, a way for you to ask questions either through Twitter at NYU Stern or over the phone. Sorry, it's on our site, but just quickly, 1-800-326-0013. Internationally, 203-702-1000. Sorry about that. And you need a passcode. Second. Um, and the conference ID is 693-5228. Um, so with that, um, can we have a question from the audience. Hello, I'm Anne Tiberg of Swedish Television, TV4 News Sweden, and I'd like to know what was your initial reaction when you uh, got to know, when you learned that you were awarded this prize? Uh, well, I think um, if we explored my personality deeply, we'd, we'd explain that I'm, I'm kind of, uh, Irres uh, I lack respect for certain sources of authority, but my ability to be disruptive is tempered by my cluelessness. <laughs> so um, I got, there were two phone calls this morning before six. I didn't answer either of them. I get spam calls all the time, so, uh, so I, um, but I couldn't get back to sleep. So I got up and looked at the phone and saw it was from Sweden. Now, I thought that prize was next Monday. I knew it was always on a Monday, but I thought it was next Monday. So I called back thinking they were trying to do some like due diligence or something about, you know, some somebody else and then um, and then they uh, they asked me if I would accept and you know, well I didn't I didn't ever want it, but yeah, I'll, I'll accept. <laughs> so are you going to celebrate? Well, I must say, the other thing is, you know, the moment where I got happy was when I asked them, did somebody else get, receive the prize? And they said, yes. Pause. Who, who was it? You know, oh, it's Bill Nordhaus. That was when I got happy, because Bill is a terrific uh, colleague. He's a terrific person. And to a degree that hasn't been picked up necessarily in the quick coverage, long before he worked on uh, climate issues, he was working on the same questions about the economics of discovery and ideas about 10 years before, um, before I started working on them. So there's a very close intellectual kind of connection, and uh, I'm really pleased for, uh, for Bill. Okay, and then you had a question I ignored. What was it? Oh, I promised my girlfriend we'd go out to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Maria Teresa Cometto with Il Corriere della Sera from Italy. Uh, can you please explain uh, how your work about uh, urbanization here at NYU uh, relates to uh, ideas about uh, sustainable global growth? Yeah, that's a fair question. Um, can I explain it? Well, we'll see. I don't know. Um, I, have a, I have a conjecture in mind. Um, at the, the models sometimes help us see things very starkly. We strip away a lot of details. When you strip away all the details, catch-up growth is, it's easy to see why a country like China might catch up. What's puzzling is that many countries don't because they literally don't have to reinvent the wheel. They can use what's already known uh, to take advantage of the same technologies that, that we use. So the puzzle is what gets in the way of the flows of knowledge and the acquisition of skills. And so 
education's a part of it that you know my family has been kind of committed to and I've been committed to as well. But I became convinced that urban areas, or to use a phrase that a colleague of mine, Ed Glazer, uses, cities make us smart. What it is is cities are the place to go if you want to learn about the modern world. So if you take the, the billions of people in the developing world who can't yet connect into this chance to learn, cities that can welcome them. And here I'm going to use the language of my colleague, Sully Angel, who's been doing this work in Ethiopia and um, um, Colombia, for example, as a proof of, uh, of what's possible. What we need to do is make room for people who want to move into cities. You know, there's billions of people who'd want to move into cities and people who are already in cities who want to have more space. We've got to make room for that uh, to take place. So um, as I said, I'm not an expert in urban planning, but I saw the opportunity there and came to NYU because NYU was the kind of scrappy, risk-taking sort of place that was willing to try something um, like this. And through the Marin Institute and the work of, of, of Solly, you know, I think we have a chance at showing people that this is doable. The same thing that New York City did in 1811 that contributed to the, the significant success of New York as a city, uh, Solly and his team have been doing in Huasa and Bahardir, Bahar, Bahir Dar in Ethiopia. And, um, and in uh, Monteria in, in Colombia. And I'll be going back to Ethiopia um, uh, in, in the next month or two. I told you I was clueless. Sometime in the next two months, I got, I'm going back to Ethiopia to um, just see about the, the, the progress there. So if we can give people a chance to do what they want to do, which is just move in and connect with this world of opportunity, with this chance to learn, we can really make a difference in what um, the quality of life is like for I think, billions of people. Did I, did I explain it? Is that okay? Okay. Um, I'm not in charge of calling. Hey, it's Sandra from Tencent. So um, first of all, uh, the Nobel Prize actually recognized your work, which contributes 30 years ago. So I mean, Nowadays, do you see the, uh, the the knowledge or idea has been created by some new ways because of the maybe new technology? The other thing is that the president uh, says that you are committed to NYU Shanghai as well. So I want you to maybe comment on China's innovation mechanism. What's the bright spot or what's the new challenge there? Thanks. Okay. Do you know the saying in, in English? So what have you done lately? You know, that's, I think, one way to interpret, well, that was work 30 years ago. I mean, you know, what are, we, what are you doing lately? Um, China is a very interesting example of this model I was describing of making room for urban development that then, uh, and, and these urban centers are the hubs that connect you to the rest of the world. So it's often coastal urban development that provides um, uh, opportunity. So, uh, I, I wanted to experience uh, the, the kind of the, this period of transition in China directly. And of course, I wanted to support this very bold initiative uh, that NYU had taken to try and establish a kind of a, this connected network version of the, the university that nobody's been able to make work so far. But I think NYU's doing uh, actually very, uh, a very good job of it. So, um, so it was a great experience. I spent the, the fall semester uh, several years ago uh, 